people smugglers could face life sentences under Priti Patel's plans to crack down on channel crossings. The Home Secretary is expected to announce that the measure in an attempt to increase the average length of sentences for gangsters convicted of assisting illegal immigration. The move comes shortly after an immigration judge has allowed a convicted Nigerian fraudster to stay in the UK after claiming less than 24 hours before deportation that he was bisexual. One assumes, therefore, in danger if he went back home. Uh, the Home Office is said to have acknowledged this claim was a lie. Henry Bolton has advised numerous governments on strategic border management and security challenges. Henry, afternoon to you. I and mean, we'll come back to uh, the Nigerian fella in just a second. Um, what are you making, firstly, of Pretty Patel's... Uh, well, it seems like another Home Secretary's crackdown on illegal immigration. Yes, Ian. I mean, you know, that does need to be a crackdown. Um, but uh, I think we would all agree that this is a mess. I mean, there are, there are two problems as I see it. One is the legal minefield um, for the Home Office, which bizarrely the only people seem, who seem to have a map through it are the lawyers who, who, and solicitors who represent the asylum seekers. But the other thing is that, that the Home Office is doing is approaching this in a tactical operational manner. What is lacking is a strategic overview. I mean, these people are travelling all the way from the Horn of Africa, the Middle East, Central Asia, uh, through all of the various countries on the way to, to the French coast and then moving across here. But what they lack, what the government lacks, is any sort of strategy to deal with it along the route. They are holding everything back until these people actually arrive in the English Channel. Mm. And it's far too late. Um, in two, between 2003 and 2006, there was a great effort on the part of the, the then government and the Home Office to project forward and disrupt this movement at every... Uh, of course, there are a multitude of points along those routes that you can interdict and disrupt those, that movement and bring the people smugglers, the, some terminology, the people traf the human traffickers, to book. But um, if you leave it until the very last moment when they're actually on the, our own border, yeah. then we've got a serious disadvantage. Well, that's, that's what I would have thought, because I'm guessing that the, the smuggler is nowhere to be seen by that point, right? Well, the, the people who, who are being caught at the moment are, are, are in the main really small fry. Yeah. They are a, a drop in the ocean. These are networks that extend across continents, and we're doing very, very little to disrupt them. So, you know, I mean, there is no overall strategy. And the reason for that is because the Home Office is seeking the advice and guidance of mm. Border Force, which is understandable, but Border Force personnel and commanders are tactical operational people. They don't sure. think sort of broad, um, in military terms, theatre-wide um, perspective. They don't have that, that training or that experience. So the Home Office has got a significant gap in its knowledge and the expertise that it can draw on. In terms of Pretty Patel's response to this, I mean, is, is this... Look, I mean, I'm pretty sure I remember interviewing David Blunkett uh, not long ago on mm -hmm. this very point, And he said, you know, every Home Secretary has this one come across their desk in different forms. Uh, what do you deal with it? How do you deal with it? It's often it's the, the can is kicked down the road all the time. And all you can do is kind of try and make some mood music around it. And here's Pretty Patel saying life sentences for the smugglers. Of course, what needs to be dealt with are the people on the boats, if for no other reason than their own safety. Correct. And, uh, and uh, actually, the present maximum sentence, as I understand it, is 14 years. Yeah. But the average sentencing is, is three and a half to four years. So even if she ups it to life, are the courts to use that, that power? Sure. Um, so, uh, you know, there's a bigger issue. It, she, the, 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 the Home Secretary has no choice but to respond to public pressure public demands for action, media demands for action, lots of questions, why isn't anything being done? So she has to show that she's doing something. The fundamental problem here is that they don't know what to do. Yeah. They, can, they can talk about changing the law, and indeed the law does need changing in various respects. So does the guidance, Home Office guidance to just, uh, to, and, and the Justice Ministry guidance to judges. But... There is this big gap. We go from tactical operational, and I keep saying it, tactical operational, sort of, if you like, policing level, all the way through with a gap, massive gap, all the way through to the legal. And in the middle, 
there is a massive international diplomatic and operational effort that needs to be designed and deployed. Otherwise, this is just going to continue. Uh, they've set up a new sort of supposedly secret command centre in Dover to track these boats coming across the channel. But the fundamental fact is that you can track them as much as you want. The idea is that they don't, the migrants don't even try the journey yeah, in the first course. place. Is it true that... Actually, in terms of, I mean, the jury is often out on what, what we turn illegal immigration. I'm sure, Henry, you would call this illegal immigration, but there are lawyers out there, as you well know, who will say, actually, there is nothing illegal about trying to make the journey to another country. That, that's a, a debate for another day. In terms of if whatever way we define this form of immigration, is it true that it actually hasn't increased that much in recent years? It's just the method has changed. People used to try and go through the tunnel on the backs of lorries. They've largely uh, locked down on that and been very good at stopping uh, migrants from using that method to come to the UK. But this has now become the preferred choice. So it's a different method, but the numbers aren't so different. Is that is that true? That's partly true. These, these movements of people come in waves. And of course, we saw a massive wave of, of immigration towards Europe in 2014, um, following the breakdown of the rule of law even further in Libya and so on. Um, there are various conflicts and various dynamics that change this. One of the things that changes it, of course, is the tactical response actually on our borders. And if you apply greater or more effective controls and screening at your border crossing points, then you will find more migrants trying to, to bypass those border crossing points. They will come in somewhere else. And now they're coming across the water. Um, there is the safety problem in trying to block them in doing so. Yep. But ultimately, again, it's about, you know, I'm going to use another military term, I'm sorry, but the, perhaps the Home Office could learn a little bit. Defence in depth. We need to go further beyond that, not wait until they're at sea and try and interdict them and turn them back when it's intrinsically, in some cases, unsafe to do so. Indeed. Um, so, of course, they will always, you know, it's, if, if you push your finger into a balloon, it'll, bul it'll bulge out somewhere else. And that's what will happen as long as we don't have a broader, more international strategic approach to this. The, the Home Office doesn't have a clue. Tinkering with yeah. the, 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 the laws and... Uh, you know, this sort of thing isn't going to help. A, a yeah, the, the, pro, the as you say, Henry, the, the problem isn't, you know, what's happening literally in the channel. That's the manifestation of the problem. It's, it's, it's elsewhere. Henry, it's always good to have you on and get your view on this. Thank you, Henry Bolton, who knows his territory in this respect, advised numerous governments on strategic border management and security challenges with us here on Talk Radio.